In this video, we are going to be looking at the process of ionization, removing an electron from an atom, and the energy associated with that process. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what ionization energy is, explain the trends in ionization energies of different elements relative to their position in the periodic table, and relate ionization energy to atomic structure. Let's take a quick moment to review the basics of atomic structure. First, we have the nucleus, which is comprised of neutrons and positively charged protons. Then, we have the electron cloud, which is made up of negatively charged electrons. We are going to ignore talking about neutrons since they have no charge and they aren't that important to us. Consider the phosphorus atom with 15 protons and 15 electrons. Which of the following equations represents the process of ionizing, removing, one of phosphorus's electrons? In the process of removing an electron, the electron must be a product, which eliminates all of the options where the electron acts as a reactant. We also know that the resulting atomic ion will now have more protons than electrons since one was removed. We have 15 protons still, but only 14 electrons now. So the resulting phosphorus ion will be positive, which makes this the correct equation. As you know, negatively charged things are attracted to positively charged things. This is the essence of Coulomb's law. What does that mean about the energy associated with the process of removing an electron? Since there is a strong attraction between the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electron cloud, Coulomb's law tells us that we will need to add energy to remove the electron. That means that delta E, or change in energy, is positive. This delta E is called the ionization energy, the minimum energy required to remove an electron from the gaseous atom or ion. It can be very helpful to represent this process using an energy change diagram. Let's investigate. These diagrams have a single axis, the vertical axis, which is energy. Where do high energy things go on this axis? That's right, higher on the axis means something is higher in energy. Let's add our original, neutral, phosphorus atom as a state on this diagram. We draw states on these diagrams as horizontal lines, not touching the vertical axis. Changes in energy are represented by arrows. Arrows going up from a state indicate a positive change in energy, energy is being added, and arrows going down from a state indicate a negative change in energy, energy is being removed. If we wanted to add an arrow starting from our phosphorus atom initial state that represents the ionization of an electron, which direction would the arrow go? That's right, since ionization requires energy to be added, delta E is positive, that means that the arrow goes up from the phosphorus initial state. At the end of this arrow is the new state, the P plus ion. The length of the arrow represents the ionization energy of phosphorus. Now that we have ionized one electron, we no longer have a neutral phosphorus atom. Instead, we are left with a phosphorus cation, P plus, since one of its electrons has been removed. That being said, there are still 14 electrons remaining in this P plus ion, and each of them can also be ionized given the right amount of energy. What do you predict about the second ionization energy of phosphorus? the energy required to remove an electron from P+. To answer this question, let's start by writing the equation for the second ionization process. We start with our P plus cation. It has 15 protons and 14 electrons. And in the process of ionizing another electron, we are left with a P2 plus cation. Still 15 protons, but now 13 electrons. Both processes involve removing one electron from the atom, but the second ionization energy will be larger than the first. In fact, all subsequent ionization energies will be larger than the previous ones. This is because, as we remove electrons, there is an increasingly greater electrostatic attraction between the positively charged ion and the electron that is being removed that we must overcome. Let's summarize what we have seen so far for phosphorus. The first ionization energy is the energy for the process that starts with a neutral phosphorus atom and leads to a P plus cation and one electron. Delta E for this reaction can be written as I subscript 1 also called the first ionization energy. The second ionization energy is the energy for the process that starts with the P plus cation and produces a P2 plus cation and another electron. Delta E for this process can be written as I subscript two. And remember, the second ionization energy is greater than the first. Take a moment to write the equation for the third ionization energy of phosphorus. Which of the following is the correct equation? What do you predict about the value of the third ionization energy? The third ionization energy of phosphorus really means the ionization energy of P2+, because all ionizations happen in sequence. That means we are starting off with the P2 plus ion, since two electrons have already been removed, and one of the products is an electron. 
that makes the resulting phosphorus ion P3+, which makes this the correct equation. And, as we know, all subsequent ionization energies get increasingly larger, so the third ionization energy is greater than the second. Ionization energy is an important periodic property that will give us a lot of insight into how electrons behave in atoms. If we look at this graph of the first ionization energy against atomic numbers, interesting and somewhat confusing patterns begin to emerge. For example, looking at the graph, we can see that the noble gases have relatively large first ionization energies compared to atoms near them on the periodic table. Likewise, the alkali metals have the lowest ionization energies of all the atoms in the same period. These trends in ionization energies will help us soon to understand how electrons behave in these atoms and why atoms in the same family on the periodic table have similar chemical properties.